Hi, we are now going to learn about heat transfer mechanisms, different ways in which heat is transferred from one body to another body. Before we start, let us quickly relook at the definition of heat. Heat is the energy transfer that happens due to temperature difference. So if I had two objects at different temperatures and energy was flowing because of temperature difference, this energy flow is called heat. What does heat do? Well, it reduces the internal energy of the hot object and it increases the internal energy of the cold object. So all of this we already know about heat. The question we have not yet answered is how exactly is this energy transfer happening and how long does it take for this heat to flow, right? So all of these we have not yet answered and that's what we are going to study when we look at heat transfer mechanisms. There are three different modes in which heat transfer happens. These are conduction, convection and radiation. Let us quickly look at examples of each of these. Conduction. On a cold day, if you are holding a nice hot cup of tea or coffee, your fingers feel a warmth. Right? So, heat is getting transferred from the cup to your fingers. This heat transfer is the process of conduction. There is direct contact and there is no matter movement from the cup to your fingers, this process of heat transfer is called conduction. Okay? We will come back and study that in more detail. Whenever you cook something, usually you use convection as the main heat transfer mechanism. For example, if I am boiling water or milk, right? then the main heat transfer mechanism is convection. Usually only the bottom layer of water gets hot. How does the rest of the water get hot? Ah, because once the bottom layer becomes hot, it starts rising up. So the water rises up and there is large scale movement of water and that is how heat transfer happens. So this is convection. This is an example of convection. On a cold day, if you sit before a fire, right, like this, you are not touching that fire. You are at some distance from the fire, but your hands feel warm. So how is heat getting transferred to your hands? Because this fire is actually emitting electromagnetic waves. These electromagnetic waves carry energy to your hands and that's how your hands feel that warmth. So this is a process which we call radiation. Okay? Let us now look at each of these processes a little bit more closely. We will first start with conduction. In conduction, heat is transferred without, without large scale matter movement. Okay? There is no large scale matter movement that happens in conduction. So if I have a hot object and a cold object like this, but they are not touching each other, there will be no conduction because conduction needs direct contact. So let us keep them in contact like this. When you put them in contact, there is heat flowing from the hot to the cold object. How does this heat flow? Basically, the hot object has atoms vibrating very fast. I am going to call these hot atoms. The cold object has atoms vibrating slowly. We will call them cold atoms. Now at the border, right, at the boundary, these hot atoms, right, they are vibrating very fast. They collide with the cold atoms and in this collision, the hot atoms transfer kinetic energy to the cold atoms. So that is how energy is transferred from the hot object to the cold object, okay, because of atomic level collisions. Now I want you to remember, energy is flowing from the hot object to the cold object. Energy travels this way, but the atoms don't travel from here to there. These atoms are vibrating and they stay here itself. Those atoms are vibrating, they stay there. Only the energy gets transferred, the atoms stay where they were. So the atoms are not moving. That's why we say heat transfer without large scale matter movement. Of course, at the atomic level, the matter is moving, but they are moving wherever they were, right? They were just staying there and they are just vibrating in that same place. Just that because of the collision, there is transfer. Now, if you want collision to happen, you must have direct contact, right? If this was far away from that, this will vibrate here and that will vibrate there. There will be no collision. So, for the collision to happen, you must have contact. So, it requires direct contact, but there is no matter movement that happens. Energy travels from this region to that region, but matter does not move. Matter stays where it was. So, this is conduction. In convection, matter actually moves. Heat transfer because of hot matter's movement, that is convection. Okay? So let us understand that by looking at some liquid like this. So let us say this is water. I am heating this up. So the bottom layer is the one that gets hot. 
and because once it gets hot it starts rising up why because it's basically hotter its density gets lesser etc so it starts going up and by physically moving up like this it heats up that region okay and now the next layer here starts getting hot so here the hot atoms physically move to the cold region carrying thermal energy with them so if you want atoms to move like this within that material where is it possible it is only possible when flow of atoms is allowed flow of atoms is not allowed in solids it is allowed in liquids and gases so only in liquids and gases which basically means fluids you can have this kind of flow of atoms so that means convection is not possible in solids it is only possible in liquids and gases convection is possible in solids liquids and gases okay please remember convection happens in solids it also happens in liquids it also happens in gases but convection cannot happen in solids it only happens in liquids and gases so only happens in fluids now it turns out that if you take conduction though all three liquid solids and gases can have conduction solids conduct really well so solids particularly metals they are very very good conductors when you compare it with fluids that's because the atoms are very nicely packed so lot of vibration can happen and easily one set of atoms can transfer heat to the next set of atoms so you can see that in conduction you will find that with solids usually they have much better conductors when you compare it with liquids and gases convection cannot even happen in uh, solids convection only happens in liquids and gases only happens in fluids whereas conduction happens in all three but solids are much better at conduction compared to liquids and gases okay now let's look at the third way in which heat is transferred which is radiation so in radiation electromagnetic waves carry energy from the hot body to the cold body so if i have a hot object and a cold object like this the hot object emits electromagnetic waves so some of these electromagnetic waves reach the cold object and then the cold object gets some energy through that process so the hot atoms emit thermal radiation okay when they bump into each other so if you have a hot object the atoms are vibrating very fast and when they vibrate and they bump into another atom so and they're not bumping into that fellow's atoms they are bumping into their own atoms right so when that happens they basically convert a part of their kinetic energy into electromagnetic waves these electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light electromagnetic waves means like light is an electromagnetic wave you have infrared electromagnetic waves you have ultraviolet rays you have lots of different types of electromagnetic waves all of these carry energy so a hot object emits electromagnetic waves in all directions so they basically carry energy away from the hot object some of those may go and reach the cold object transferring heat from the hot to the cold object okay so here energy can be transferred even through vacuum if you look at convection or conduction you need matter for these kinds of radiation right which is electromagnetic waves electromagnetic waves pass through vacuum sun every day transfers a huge amount of heat to the earth how it is not in contact there is no matter between the sun and the earth so it is entirely through electromagnetic waves so radiation so radiation can transfer energy through huge vacuum gaps at the speed of light okay so very very fast so hot objects radiate out energy some of this radiation reaches the cold object and transfers the energy to the cold object so these are three different ways in which heat transfer happens we are now going to take each of these and study that in a little more depth